Monday. Nope. Wednesday. May the 1st. 2024. I am James. You are you. We are here. Five seconds into the show, there's already a blooper, blunder, and boner. Why did I say Monday? Well, the show's usually on Monday. Hasn't been in a long, long time. So with that said, I would like to say, Hello, my friend, we'll meet again. Been a while, where should we begin? It feel like forever. He's not a bad singer, Scott Stapp. He gets a bad rap. It's a very easy band to make fun of, much like Nickelback. But Creed is on their way back. And I'd like to think that this show is the Creed of Twitch. It started hot. Damn, did it start hot. And then it quickly went not. Now, I'd like to think that we are on the rebound like Scott and the boys from Creed. And when you're trying to get back into the good graces, if you're a musician or a band, you need a hit. Now, Creed, they can rely on, when you are with me, they can rely on that. They can rely on, can you take me? They can rely on, hold me now, I'm six feet from... I don't have hits, because what we do is brand new, brand new, brand new but what if what if there were greatest hits that's the question i asked myself today on, on the turlet and i had an answer i thought the show has not been happening on mondays we're all out of sorts i need to bring out the big guns i need my hire i need my my sacrifice i need my one last breath if you're hanging in there i'm still talking about creed who did I find? I grabbed my shovel. I dug up a grave. And tonight we bring in one of the legends in at-home history. He is a business owner of multiple types. He's got a training center. He's got a bar. And tonight we go in-depth, in-deep. I ask him questions Audience members have been sending in questions and inquiries and curiosities. And hell, you can do it too in the chat. Because tonight, we welcome back, without any further adieu, the one and the only pickup artist specialist himself. Please welcome back to At Home, Socrates. <laughs> Socrates, welcome back, man. Hey, James, how's it going? I need this bad. I need a bump. I need a boost. And I thank you so very much for answering my call today. Well, you know, I'm uh, known for uh, doing bumps and giving boosts. So uh, I'm the right guy for your needs, James. Well, Socrates, would you like to introduce yourself to those who may not know who you are? The floor is yours. Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Socrates. And that's spelled how? That's uh, the, the usual way. Well, it's unusual, really. No, it's the well, it's the usual way to me, James. It's S. All right, w which would be O, C, R, A, T, E, A, S, E. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I knew it. I yeah, thought well, I knew it. Who doesn't know their own name? J A M E S. The usual sure, way yeah. to me. Yeah, and I only I mean, I go by a singular name. Uh, much like uh, Prince or uh, Cher mm -hmm. or uh, any others, uh, Zendaya. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah, of course. Um, now, I mentioned that you're a business owner. Yeah, you are a pickup artist. Let people know your training. Center. Sure. Yeah. So, I Let's mean, get the brass tacks out of the way. First, yeah, I should introduce my uh, my profession. I'm a, an artist in the uh, lost art of pickup art. Uh, where I uh, excel at uh, encountering ladies and uh, picking them up, taking them home. All right. You also own a bar in which you often do your spots from. Yeah. 
Thank you. Let us know about your bar. You're good at uh, you're good at this interview, James. You, it's not bad. You're filling all the gaps. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I own a bar. It's called uh, Sucker Please, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, bar where uh, ladies and men get together, uh, or men and men, or ladies and ladies, mm-hmm. depending on your preferences. And uh, you know, uh, things get a little bit freaky here. A well, it of, seems a lot a of quiet uh, tonight. I may say. Well, it's uh, we're closed on uh, on Wednesdays. Right. Okay. And Mondays. We're- what, okay, so wait, it's open on Tuesday, we're but open, then it's closed again on Wednesday. We're open Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Wait, you have a bar <laughs> that is not open on Fridays? No, fr- not Fridays. And sun- Sunday afternoons. Why is it not open on Fridays? It feels like a great night to meet. Uh, it's it's uh, it's for religious reasons. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume it's as such. What religion? I wasn't aware that you were a religious man. I'm not. Okay. Wait, so you close in solidarity? In solidarity. <laughs> for who? Uh, for the religious people out there, James. All right. So no one in specific. No one anyone, specific. Anyone who may have rules involving religion on a Friday. Anyone who prays to a lord or a savior, uh, we shut down on one day a week for them. Well, you're, sh- well, you're also shut down other days of the week. Well, well one day is. Non-religious reasons. One day is for the workers. Yep. And one day is for the ladies. All right. Well, wait. Okay, so you close for the ladies. What's the significance of that? Uh, the ladies need a day to relax. All right, yeah, from being picked up. <laughs> from being picked up. You can only pick up a lady uh, so often. Right. Tuesdays, Thursdays, yeah. Saturdays, and Sunday afternoons. Sunday afternoons, yeah. All right, well, let's get into it, Socrates. I have to say you've not been here, I think, in... Close to a year, last time you were here, we read a script that I had an AI generator write involving you as the main antagonist. Yeah, that was pretty good, James. Did you like that? You played yourself Uh, in the script reading. Yeah, and I think it was pretty accurate in terms of uh, my behavior and demeanor. I think I was corrupting a guy named Dave Kaufman. That's correct. He's on the board tonight. Yeah. Well, hi, Dave. How's it going? You talked about your behavior and demeanor. I want to talk about your appearance tonight. You seem younger than the last time I saw you, physically speaking. Well, I've uh, undergone, and I'm not ashamed of this, James. I've undergone several surgeries. You look like (laughs) David Guest. Who's that? Uh, He was at one point, he's no longer with us. He was married to Liza Minnelli, and he was awfully cosmetically altered. Okay, well, I'm awfully cosmetically... I'm, I wouldn't say awfully, but I am cosmetically okay. altered. Okay, so what you're admitting to, what's some of the work you had done? Uh, well, I've had uh, several uh, rounds of Botox, James. Mm-hmm. Had a nose broadening. Oh, you broadened your nose? I broadened my nose, yeah. So I could wear more uh, sunglasses and they would sit firmer on my face. Before right, I had okay. a little tiny nose and my sunglasses would wobble back and forth. Well, well, you, your eyebrows are very pronounced. I had a hair transplant uh, from the uh, back of my head, which is bald, <laughs> to my eyebrows. Wait. All right, so the back of your head is bald? I removed two little strips from both sides of the back of my head. And but now you've just got two blank spots? Yeah, well, I cover them up. With what? What? With what? Oh, I don't want to show it, James. It's one of my. All right. It's one of the things that I'm not uh, so fond of, but I have. Well, in in my defense, I did not ask you to show it. That's fine. I have two uh, two uh, cosmetic wigs that I put on the back of my head like that, and that hair has gone to my eyebrows, thick, luscious eyebrows. Okay. Well, what inspired the change? Check this out. All right, so you can move the eyebrows. That's yeah, good. They've you got a mind of their own. Have you seen the uh, that movie with uh, Seth Green? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you just say your eyebrows have a mind of their own? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. All right. You've seen that movie with Seth Green where uh, there's that hand that has a mind of its own? No. I think it's called Idle Hands. I'm not sure. I can't say that I've had the pleasure. Anyway, I have a similar eyebrow situation. Well, I, I, I'm sure that... The answer to my question is related to this comment from the chat from High Score Run. Wow. Uh, they write, those eyebrows are like a posturing peacock. I imagine everything is for for you to peacock. Yeah, exactly. Well, peacocking for the uninformed, 
uh, and I'm good at explaining it because I do run a PUA school, James. Peacocking yeah. is the art of uh, wearing or uh, having something done to you that's interesting, that catches the eye of the opposite sex and could even cause them to come approach you and ask you about it. So I've had many ladies come up to me and ask me, hey, why is there two little slits of hair missing from the back of your head? Right, it's it's a conversation starter. (laughs) Yeah, Okay. Well, how has the school been going? It's been a long time, as mentioned, since we caught up. Well, school was a bit slower during COVID, uh, but uh, since we... I imagine the classes were online. Classes were online. Uh, We run uh, level one through five of uh, PUA and uh, have a drop-in workshop uh, every week uh, sort of to spark interests. Yep. Uh, But we were able to uh, reopen uh, in person uh, since the pandemic is over. This feels like really old news. Things, you you know, things started to reopen in 2021. Yeah, you're asking me how things were going, right? Yeah, yeah, currently how things are going. Yeah, so there's been a bit of a, there's been a bit of a PUA boom since the pandemic. Yeah, people are very interested in, well, that uh, makes sense. Back. I'm sure people spent a lot of time being alone, and the people that were already alone having a difficult time and trying to pick up probably needed it now more than ever. Yeah, and you know, sometimes people come to Sucker Please, and I say, uh, you know, Sucker Please isn't just a nightclub, it's also a school. Right, okay. So, is the school running out of the nightclub? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have... Uh, Hold we on, have... were you just checking yourself out? Yeah, I always <laughs> check myself out, James. <laughs> All right, well, I guess... Part of being a good PUA is confidence. It's confidence and it's uh, maintaining a certain bar of aesthetics. Uh, having white teeth, having thick eyebrows, nice smile. Yeah. Wait, that's your nice smile? Yeah. So it seems a little creepy. No, no. Ladies don't find it creepy. They find it charming. All right. All right. How old are you again? How old am I? Yeah. Oh man, age ain't nothing but a number, James. All right, so, all right, so not aging, aging with grace. <clears throat> yeah, Will what, and grace. what was that? What? What was that noise? I've got some uh, pubic hair in the back of my throat. Wait, wait, your own? What? No, of course my own. What? Oh, wait, wait, what were you doing prior to the show? Uh, James, I don't know. Uh, a gentleman doesn't lick and tell. Wait, oh god, wait, you had a woman over there earlier? I'm not saying yes or no, but yeah. Well, she's gone now, I imagine. No. Wait, what? She's she's around. Well, where is she? Would you like for her to say hello? Uh, no. Uh, a lady doesn't All right, uh, now I think I, I, kiss and tell. In the past, Socrates, you, when you appear... <coughs> yeah, get that pubic hair out. <laughs> You've been known to uh, continue coitus during an interview. Sure, I mean... Uh, is that what's happening right now? Uh, I'm not gonna... I won't say if I'm uh, engaged in... Uh, coitus or uh any kind of uh licking sucking well you're not doing any of it no or if i'm being licked or sucked i'm not gonna say it all right well let's just calm down with those your abusive i'm uh, not gonna say it james yeah i'm not saying it why what's wrong what's wrong with that you ever have Have, have you seen since since there's been a boom any real success stories people that you thought they've got no chance they've got no business in the pua game who've gone on to great things sure yeah absolutely uh, I've had many clients who uh, they come in and you wouldn't believe these people, James. They well, look, can you explain them? Well, they're they're desperate, uh, oftentimes men, unfortunately, and yeah. they don't they just don't know how to connect with uh, with women. Well, what would you say some of the 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 skills that they lack socially are? Uh, you know, uh, brash confidence that uh, right. Uh, hygiene. They stink. Anything else? Okay, so they, they, they're bad. They smell and they lack brash confidence. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they also don't ha- know how to approach a lady without, uh, you know, uh, scaring her a little bit. Well, what are some of the mistakes that some of these people, oftentimes, as you mentioned, men make? What are some of the faux pas when approaching a woman that you would say fall under your don't list? Uh, don't. Just walk up to a lady and start talking to her. Okay. What Don't else? tell a lady that she looks good. Okay. Uh, don't be nice. Don't be respectful. All right. So basically, don't engage with a compliment or no. anything oh, James. friendly. James. 
Jay, serious James. Okay, so I imagine you a run compliment. Through... Oh, I'm sorry. Again, I uh, I'm not I'm not part of the PUA world. Wow, that is truly an evil laugh. I've never heard anyone on this show laugh like that. No. It sounds like a VHS cassette uh, repeating itself. My sweet, sweet child. Okay, so what what do you think is an optimal starter when you're looking to pick up a lady? Well, uh, we've talked about it before on on this very show, I think, James. But uh, you want to uh, you want to disarm her defenses. Right. Every woman is like a alarm force house. Yeah. They're ready to ring the alarm and call the cops on you. Right. Yeah. So, so you've got to be a uh, uh, Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible mm-hmm. and uh, break in and steal the knocklist. Is this how you explained it in the workshops? They're so, like an alarm force, the alarm company that used to have the radio jingle? Yeah, alarm force. Do you remember the phone number? Uh, no. Call 1-800-267-2001. Two thousand and one. Alarm force. Doom. Might as well have been a woman saying that, James. Right. (laughs) The list on the TSX. They're tradable. Yes. Oh man, I can make a lot of money on them. They are great. They've uh, busted me numerous times. Wait, they've busted you? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. The alarm force. Oh, it's uh, it's tough to get by those ones. All right. Well, I'm not going to pry into that or whatever your priors might be. So how would you go about disarming uh, a potential um, interest? Well, you'd like to, you want to approach your friends first, James. Okay. And uh, you want to win over the friends, maybe make a, you know, a crass joke about uh, something uh, sensual or sexual. Uh, now, what the, would that sound like? Uh, okay. Well, you'll, crass you'll, joke. You'll be the friend, okay? All right. So I'm just, I'm there and my friend is whom you're interested in. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be like. Okay. Hey. So, yeah. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. Do we know each other? Uh, no, not yet. But now we do. My name is uh, Socrates. What's yours? Oh, my name is Joanne. It's n- and nice to meet you. I'm just I'm just here with my friends. Oh, Joanne, like Joanne McLeod from Body Break. <laughs> well, I'd like to break that body. All right, so there's your <laughs> yeah. There's your crass <laughs> comment. Yeah. So you're basically just looking for. A bridge, so to speak. You set them up yeah. so they answer in the... Well, okay, but or if their name is Hal, you say, uh, oh, Hal, uh, you want to see my Johnson? <laughs> well, what if they... What if the person It's mostly say, body break related material. Okay, but what if they don't know... It's a, how old are you? What? Age ain't you? nothing but a number. All right. Um, what if they don't know the reference? What if... So, and also, you need to... Specifically, meet people named Hal or Joanne. I mean, that helps a lot for these jokes, James. Okay, but what what happens if they don't know the reference? If they don't know Body Break? Yeah. What if What if you were to say, "Oh, like Joanne McLeod," and this Joanne were to say, "Well, who's that?" Well, uh, then I would say uh, I would go along uh, the "Stay alert, stay safe" route. And then, well, they they might say something like, "Safe from what?" Safe from uh, all the... Keep in mind, you said it's a crass joke. <laughs> right. I'd like to break into that safe and rob it. All right. Well, it sounds really, you know, predatory. Oh, it is predatory, James. All right. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, I, I put a call out to people. If they ever had a question for a pickup artist... Mm-hmm. Tonight's the night. We we received quite a few interesting questions. Are you ready to hear some of them? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this one comes in from, I think, someone who is a little bit nervous when approaching a, a potential interest. They write, how do I get my hands to be less clammy? So it sounds like this person's really nervous in approaching. Uh, well, there's a little product I use sometimes called uh, Gold Bond. Wait, you use Gold Bond medicated powder on your hands? Yeah. Well, I have a lot of hand fungus also. Okay. I'm. Yeah, I imagine I can understand from where. Yeah, exactly. So uh, my fingers stay quite moist most of the day. So I use a lot of Gold Bond medicated well, that, powder. But is it clammy and moist? They're kind of in the same family? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, you, you know, use uh, some Gold Bond. And you can also uh, power lift with it too. Okay. So if your hands are feeling clammy to approach someone, just put some... But don't they have to carry around a bottle of Gold Bond medicated powder? 
Yeah. Okay. I imagine they have travel sizes. I would uh no, I have a I have a utility belt that I take with me to the club. Yeah, and... But it also it also sounds like it's part of a, a deeper question. This person's very nervous causing them to get clammy. What are ways they can ground themselves before approaching? I mean, alcohol also helps. Excuse me, James. <coughs> that hair is acting up. Yeah, of course <coughs> you will. Uh... <coughs> You're uh <laughs> Your, uh, it looked like your beard fell off a little bit there. My beard fell? Oh, man, this transplant. Is that another, is that another this, transplant? This thing has a mind of its own, yeah. Okay, wait, where did that hair come from? Oh, man. Uh, it came from my ass, James. All right, so... And the problem is I can't get the smell to go away fully. <laughs> All right. All right. So you're saying the person lubricates themselves by having a couple drinks. Yeah, yeah, that helps, too. All right. Anything else to kind of ground themselves in 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 confidence and calmness? Oh, it's good to have a mantra, also, James. Okay. So, what's your mantra? Do you still use one? I don't need one anymore, but but I have uh, some beginner mantras. Uh, okay. One is, uh, "I am enough." All right. I yeah. am enough. It's very self uh, affirming. Yeah, you could use that one, James. I could tell that sometimes you have lower confidence. I'm I'm fine. What are some? No, of I'm other... a, I can I can tell. All right. What are some of the other mantras? Uh, you got this, girlfriend. Wait, you you give that. What about the male students? No, you say. I mean, you call yourself a, a sassy little girlfriend. Okay, so is it you got you got this girlfriend, or you got this sassy little girlfriend? No, it's just you got this girlfriend, but you say it in kind of a sassy way. All right. Any other affirmations? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have sex tonight, and okay, no so one's you... gonna stop me. Well, I really <laughs> don't know if. That's that's the route you want to go down. What? You know, well, you're a lot of questionable things tonight. It's just an affirmation, James. All right. And it's mostly just for internal thoughts. It's internal. None of these are uh, external thoughts. They're all internal to boost your confidence. All right. We have another question. Mm -hmm. At what point did you consider yourself an artist? That's a great question. That is a great question, James. And, you know, I've never really thought about it before. Yeah. I always just... Uh, you know, I guess, when does any artist consider themselves an artist? Is it when they start a pursuit? Are you an artist right away, or does it take a certain mastery? Well, there's uh, also the the putting the 10,000 hours in concept. I'm sure that's the uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, by the way, I shouldn't be saying this, but uh, one of my former students. Wait, you, you uh, taught Malcolm Gladwell? Yeah. What was that like? He's a bit of a nerd. <laughs> well, I'm sure you get a lot. Oh, yeah. I'm used to the nerds, yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, you must consider yourself, or must have rather, at some point, because you open a school for pickup artists. Yeah, I would say that uh, probably about. Uh, at first, I was just a, a pickup apprentice, and then I became a uh, pickup uh, solo man, and then I became an artist. Okay, so at what point? Well, I would say, you know, when I started really uh, real in a minute. Well, how, how long have you been doing this for? Me? Yeah. 22 years. 22. How old are you? AJ, nothing but a number, James. All right. 22 years. That's a hell of a run. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Now, you talked about being an apprentice. Who is your teacher? My teacher. Yeah. My teacher is the great uh, Mysterio. Okay, so is it just Mysterio or the Great Mysterio? The Great Mysterio, James. Okay, is is uh, he still with us? <sighs> That's a tough conversation to have. Right. He died in a tragic sex accident. What made it tragic? And what made it a what sex? What made it tragic? The, the death, James. <laughs> sure, okay, but then I guess what made it, fair enough, what made it a sex accident? <sighs> well, I... He was uh, having wild sex, right? You know the you know the kind, James. Well, you probably haven't have... experienced, but you probably watched it on some kind of uh, website before. What would you define as wild sex? Paint a picture for what happened to the great Mysterio. He was having sex on the lip of the Grand Canyon. You've heard of uh, what's his name? That evil guy, Knievel. yeah, evil Knievel. Yeah. yeah, 
was having sex next to one of Evil Knievel's bicycle jumps. And uh, he thrust it too hard. And he thrust himself right off the lip of the Grand Canyon. What? So Evil Knievel was getting ready for a jump and the jump was there? Yeah, he was going to go see Evil Knievel's jump and he happened to charm his way into the good graces of... Uh, what a position lovely... was he in? What? What position was he in? I mean, you really want to know, James? Well, I'm curious. He was in the Eiffel Tower. Wait, so there was another guy there? <laughs> there was another guy, yeah. <laughs> the other guy was securely on firm ground. But okay, he, so so so. But in order to get on the other side of the lady, he had to lean over the cranny, James. And wait, yes, I, so was he? Did he have his back to the Grand Canyon, or he leaned over and fell in? He had his back to the Grand Canyon, and he was holding on to the hands of the other man. And their hands got clammy, James, and they didn't have any gold bond. And he started <laughs> slipping, slipping, and he slipped right off the side. Just like that uh, Sylvester Stallone movie. Cliffhanger? <laughs> yeah, Cliffhanger. Right. Actually, they made Cliffhanger about him. No, that's... <laughs> so... Yes. So, it was based on true events. It was based on a sex accident. Okay, well, that movie came out, I believe, in the late 80s. If you've been doing mm -hmm. pickup artistry for 22 years, yeah. the timeline doesn't add up. I lied when I said I was doing it for 22 years, James. I'm older than I... That I admitted earlier. Okay. But AJ ain't nothing but a number. I've actually been doing this for 50 years. Oh, wait, 50 years? Yeah, I've been a pickup artist for 50 years. How old was So the great Mysterio was probably already in his 50s by that point. Why do you say that? If you've been doing it for 50 years and you were a novice in the late 80s. Yeah. Look, I, I can't even begin to try to decipher this math. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't have sex. And during the sex, think about my former teacher. And I only yeah. hope one day I can, can be I as good of a... Can I ask you a question? I mean, you've been asking me questions the whole time, James. I mean, it's a little... It'd be weird if I said no now. Was it... Was it you on the other end of the Eiffel Tower? I didn't have any gold bond. All right. Well, let's just... My on. hands, they were clabby. He slipped. You know, if it wasn't for all this Botox, we'd be able to see your facial expression change. You just look like you're having a great time telling the story. Well, it's a pretty good story. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't really understand the nature of this question. Okay. It's... Nature ain't nothing but a number. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Quote, how does he drop him? Uh, like it's hot, James. All right, well, let's move on to the next question. This person's curious to know. Sure. Who's the one that got away? Did something happen that shaped, shaped your life into this existence? You're asking me if perhaps before I got into the pickup Yeah, or culture, maybe during. Have that I had a... I have fallen in love. All right. Would you be willing to tell us a little bit about it? Well, sure. A long time ago, uh, when I was still in high school, one of my yep. pickup artist friends dared me to see if I could you pick, pick up, up the nerd. High school? Sorry? You had a pickup artist friend in high school? Yeah. All right. He dared me to see if I could pick up the nerdiest girl in our class and take her to prom. What was so nerdy about her? She had curly hair. Right. Glasses. Glasses, yeah, and her hair was up yeah. a lot. Yeah. And that's pretty much entirely what made her nerdy. Put a wager on it? We put a rager on it, yeah. And, you know, I charmed her, and we went on a few times, and then I fell for her, James. Your your, and then she found out that it was all because of a bet. Yeah, and she got so mad at me that she broke up with me. Even though I told her that I was really in love with her now. You're explaining the the premise to the movie. She's all that. 
well, I am because the movie She's All That is based on my life. Based on her life, yes. Okay, so. Yes. Like a lot of the people in this world, they end up having movies based on their life. What do you mean in this world? What do you mean by that, in this world? Well, the world that you exist in, the pickup artist world. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the world that we exist in. It wasn't at large. I meant the universe that you exist in and not the universe we exist in. She's all that. We exist in the same universe, James. She's all that is based on your life, and the movie Cliffhanger is based on. So is based on the great Mysterio. Yeah. Also, I have a bouncer at uh, my bar, and uh, another movie was based on him. Yeah. What is it? Roadhouse. Yeah, Roadhouse. Yeah. Right. Well, at least that one's in line. Sure. Actually, uh, and then they. Uh, I have another bouncer, and they made another movie after him. Okay. And that one's Roadhouse too. All right. Let's <laughs> move on to the next question here. Sure. Um. How do you change a woman's mind about not wanting to date you? Like, how do I get convinced her that she shouldn't be dating me? Well, no. If someone's not interested, they're not responding I, to your advances. That doesn't really... Doesn't, you're, you're telling me it's never happened. I mean, not really. You've never been turned down? I don't... I mean, not really, no. Well, why did you take the classes? <laughs> what? Why did you take the classes? I was uh, for extracurricular points at my high school. Oh, wait. You were able to get extracurricular high school marks? I got, co- I got class credit. All right. It's kind of like a stash. <laughs> oh, my chair just broke. <laughs> maybe maybe it's because you got company over there. Yeah, well, you know, this chair is not made for two. <laughs> wait. <laughs> is someone sitting on the chair? What's that? What? Uh, okay, uh, a gentleman doesn't kiss and tell, James. All right, yeah. Well, there's no gentleman around. <laughs> oh yeah, we're a couple of dirty dogs, you and I, eh? <laughs> oh, not me. <laughs> oh, please, I see you. Well, okay. So let me rephrase the question. Sure. What would what would someone do, whether they're a novice? <coughs> or caught in there, huh? <laughs> oh man, these things are hard to get out. Um, for someone who's getting rejected, but they really have their eyes on someone, and they don't want to take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. How do they change a woman's mind? I think uh, if the woman thinks no, then you've already lost. Okay, interesting. So it's it's because the the pickup methods, they're not up to snuff, and that's why the woman's saying no. So in a perfect world, you are never told no because what you're doing is 100% effective. Yeah, or even if she says no, she means yes, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't... Uh... About liking you, James. Yeah, okay, got it. About liking still, you. Still a little bit, you know. I'm not sure. It, sound, I don't, it sounds I don't, bad. It feels like your your methods have uh, really amplified. What do you mean? Well, you know, I don't recall them being so uh, coarse. That's not like my coffee grains, James. Wait, coffee grains? Yeah. Wait, what, are you making coffee with the gra- like? Yeah, you, you grind them up for the French press. Understood. Okay, I, I that's thought, another I thought... move, sex move too. By the way, French press. <laughs> How does it go? What? How does the French press go? And why? Why is it relevant to the French press of the coffee world? I mean, you uh, different worlds. Well, I mean, there's a lot of uh, French sex moves. So there's the Eiffel Tower, of course, yeah. which is French in nature. Yeah. Uh, and then the French press, where you uh, you're having you're sipping on a cappuccino and pressing up against. <laughs> Wait. So it's not even a sex move. So it's called a sex move, but there's no sex. No, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of sex moves don't have sex involved in them. Oh, so this is the first that I've heard of that. Well, you know, you haven't taken my classes in full. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure that I will. This is an interesting question. Mm-hmm. This one just says why. Why this world? I imagine. Well, why? Why do anything? Well, tell us. Expand on the question. Expand on the question? I mean... Yeah. If I th- someone's questioning it, maybe, what would you do to sell them on it? I think, you know, if you're uh, if you're someone who's shy and you want to get out of your, uh, out of your uh, comfort zone, if you want to meet some new people, uh, you know, you want to get up... Uh, you want to get up on uh, the stage and... Find, a, find some community. <laughs> find some community. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good way, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, meet some like-minded people. Find a creative outlet. Mm-hmm. Uh, screw. 
All right. Yeah. Now, does that ever become difficult when, uh, you know, you've got students and teachers in the same kind of. Oh, you're as a student. You don't, uh, you don't hook up with teachers because of the power dynamic, James. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, Strip that's good. There's, there's some, uh, guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, what are some of the, other I'm not guidelines? a monster. I know. I, you know, you said some, some things that are a little bit on the line. If there's anyone who's watching this and thinking like, I don't know about this place. What are some other guidelines you could tell them about to kind of put their mind at ease? Well, you know, first come in for a drop-in workshop just to see what's going on. Okay, well, what happens in the workshops? I mean, uh, we do all sorts of uh, uh, exercises. We know that you've got build your own sunglasses. We do uh, yeah, build your own sunglasses. We do build you build in your own uh, fedora and your own pieces of flair. So bring your own felt because we don't always have the colors that people want for their felt yeah. hats. Uh, we do a lot of uh, warm-up exercises. Like what? Uh, you know, uh, stand in a circle, uh, do something called uh, evolution, uh, where we uh, evolve as people in front of each other uh, and become right. more in tune with our sensuality. Uh, you know, uh, we do, uh, and then we do kind of role playing games. Okay, so I imagine you put put the students in the scenarios that they might might be living. Yeah, we put students into scenarios, and then they have to sort of we call it. Uh, uh, you know, improvise uh, in these uh, scenarios, and yeah, you're, uh, you're building platforms. Yeah, platforms: the who, the what, the where of the scenario. Right. And then they, you know, figure out how to navigate. Now, are they responsible for building their own platforms, or do you give it to them? Like, oh, you're, you're, you're in a library. I mean, for the most advanced students, they come up with their own platforms. But for the earlier ones, you know, I side coach. And uh, I give them the scenario that they are in, and then watch them uh, evolve, and I'll give some right. notes on how so to. So there's handle. no other guidelines, though. I mean, we operate on a couple of uh, strict rules for these scenarios. Okay. Uh, we do uh, uh huh as well. Because you Which don't. Is one. I mean, you want to move the scenario forward. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to say no. You don't want to. You, say, don't basically you never say no, James. <laughs> Yeah, you don't you you don't want to block the advances. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you never block advances, and you never say. Yeah. That. So there's guidelines for the exercise. There's sort of like a code. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, I I, uh, I understand that you've got some new advanced classes coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. Yeah. Uh, firstly, uh, we got one where uh, we do uh, we uh, it's called uh, Harold One. Wait, okay, tell me about the Herald one. And, well, we have a teacher named Harold who uh, oh, got it. will uh, teach you some of his advanced techniques. Uh, He's got three techniques, and he kind of shows you how to attack those three techniques in different okay, ways. What, is his name Harold, or is it Harold the One? What? His, his pickup artist name. Harold, there's not very pickup artisty. I mean, it works for him, James. All right, fair enough. Okay, so you've got uh, Harold One. What else? Uh, we've got uh, uh, push pins. Okay. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about that? And that's where you uh, learn. Can I take to... a, Can I st take a stab in the yeah, dark? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. You you you, you see not, if you know what it's. I'm gonna guess it's like trying to hit as many locations in the night as possible to amplify your ability to pick up. James, that's exactly right. You go from right. club to club. Yeah. Uh, kind of and... like I did the Roxbury guys. Yeah, I mean, those are my former students as well. Wait, hold on. You trained people who were the inspiration for Steve and Doug Butabi? The Butabi brothers, yeah. Hey, they're real? They're real, yeah. Wait, and then that went on to, to again, another movie. M movie, yeah. You know, <laughs> You know this? Me? You? You, me? Wait, you're going to tell me that you created that? I created that, yeah. For And then uh, also... Uh, the, oh, the dance move? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he learned that at, at Socrates uh, College. Okay, so there's some, so there's like some how to gain attraction by way of dancing. Yeah, that's one of the, that's one of our uh, classes. It's, uh, it's uh, body movement and clowning. Wait, you teach clown classes? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, clowning is uh, particularly good for uh, approach. In what way? Well, you learn how to uh, read uh, body language and disarm an audience. Mm -hmm. and, and how to other... spray water and get the ladies wet. All right. <laughs> um, 
for people watching tonight who maybe are unsure if the classes are for them, what do you say to those people? I mean, the classes are for everybody. We've taught uh, pretty much, uh, you know, any age, uh, any uh, background, any kind of uh, philosophy or ideology. Uh, you know, people want to learn how to engage but with other people. What you're saying is it's not a racist or ageist school. Yeah, we've got a strict inclusion policy, James. All right, well, that's good. Yeah. So that was your pitch. Just you, everyone can take the classes. Well, you want me to say people can't take the classes? Well, I'm basically I'm I'm trying to tee you up to to really sell people on this, you know. Look, people are lonely out there, James. These yeah. classes sell themselves because people are lonely. They want to meet other people, and they don't know how. They're All sad. Right. They're pathetic. What? They sit at home and they waste away watching All wrestling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. You don't watch wrestling. No, that's kind of make believe stuff. Are you kidding? All right. So they're desperate to take these classes. Okay, now uh, your website is? My website. Are you not online? I thought I had forwarded you on my promo material before. Well, I know you're on Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, yeah. And your you, your handle is? I, I don't know, I gotta check, I don't remember. Well, I remember. <laughs> you remember? Okay, great. Yeah, it's at Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's at Instagram. Yeah, you took, you took the name before the company did. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, when you're on Instagram, what are you thinking about? Hey, I'm on Instagram. I should check out what's going on on Instagram. Yeah, that's what everyone's thinking about. Yeah, and that's why when I'm on uh, uh, when I'm on uh, Truth Social. <laughs> you have a Truth Social account? <laughs> yeah, it's at Truth Social. Are you, are you on X, formerly known as Twitter? Of course I'm on X. X marks what's your, the spot. What's your handle? My, my, my handle is uh, triple X. All right, and your Truth Social account? Is uh, Truth Social. <laughs> How do you spell that? Social? Yeah. Well, it's Truth, T-R-U-T-H. You know how to spell Truth, right, James? Yeah. yeah and what about Social? S-O-C. Now, remember, it's not an S, it's a C. Yeah. Yeah, I... just, it's like in social. Yeah. Yeah. It's, ac you, it's pretty smart. Where was I? C, I, A, L. So it's just social, but you pronounce it social. <laughs> but that's how you pronounce it. Well, yeah, but if you're reading it, you would see truth social. It's at truth social on truth yeah, social. No, there's a problem if you tell people yeah, you can find me on truth social at truth social. People are going to have to ask and then it's just spelled truth social. I don't understand where you're coming from, James. All right, there's a couple more questions here. Sure, uh, speed round. Let's go. to the party, yeah. Someone wants to know, do you still offer classes for female PUAs? Yeah, we have a, we have a dedicated uh, female stream. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, female teachers uh, that uh, know, they know how to get guys. You know, it's really hard yep. for a lady to pick up a random guy at the club. A lot of ladies are intimidated. A lot of guys, you know, they get approached by a lady. They say, go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These ladies, teachers, will teach you how to get that action that you want. Well, I remember, I don't know if you recall, uh, over a year ago, we had the At Home with James Live and in person. Two of your female teachers are your daughters. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, if they weren't my daughters, you know, watch out. Wait, watch out for what? For just watch out, man. Yeah, soccer teams. There's been a lot, like you, a lot of veiled predatory comments tonight. I don't understand. Nothing about PUA utter... culture is predatory, James. I yeah, want to be explicit they're... about that. Who's watching out? <laughs> Them. <or> <coughs> who's watching out? What? Who's Somebody's watching me. No, never mind. So, so I'm curious, you know, how, how big is the female student body? Oh, man, we've got like uh, 200 ladies in the classes right now. E what? How many men are in the classes? Uh, I don't know, 50, 60. 
Wait, there are more female PUAs? Yeah, it's about a four to one ratio of ladies to guys. Oh, I, I have to say I'm surprised. I didn't think women would have such a hard time trying to pick up. Oh, man, everyone's got troubles, James. You shouldn't uh, judge people like that. I didn't judge anybody. Yeah, you made an assumption. You made a presumption. I made an assumption, but I didn't make a judgment. And you know what they say about assumptions, James. Well, they they ain't ask. no good. All right, well, I, that's, I don't recall that's how the saying goes. Uh, before we wind down tonight, any any final, final words, encouragement about the school, the bar? I know that you're going to be uh, open tomorrow. Is there anything fun happening? Is it a theme night? Anything? Uh, it's a great question, James. Tomorrow night is uh, ladies' night at the bar. Uh, ladies can drink for a shot for free. Okay, got it. Which, uh, you know, has been costing me a lot of money because there's a lot of ladies around. Okay, um, and Saturday night. Honestly, my finances aren't doing too well right now. Well, it sounds like the school's doing well, though. School's doing well, but I'm giving away way too many shots. Why don't you just maybe change it, right? Oh, Where God, I have a ladies' night, James. I'm not a Neanderthal. You can just give... It doesn't have to be free. It could be dollar shots. You know, that's an interesting marketing plan. All right. Well, you'll still make a bit of money, and it's still a good deal. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And what's going on Saturday night? Saturday night is uh, we got MC Mario uh, DJing at the club. You get MC <laughs> Mario at Sucker, please? Well, he's a former student of mine. You taught MC Mario? Yeah. And then they made a movie about it, the Mario movie. And Sunday afternoon? Sunday afternoon. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, what's their name? Chumbawamba is playing live. All right. On the, in the afternoon. Yeah, nice Sunday afternoon oh. Chumbawamba show. Where can people find Sucker, please? I mean, we're on Instagram, but the bar location, yeah, is on. Uh, we're on Crescent Street, of course. All right, the address. Uh, you'll you'll find us. Just follow the lights that are pointed into the sky. Okay, Crescent and what? Crescent and what? Yeah, the, the, what's the cross street? Uh, it's uh, Crescent 